What is vitamin B12? It's sometimes called the energy vitamin. Now, its real name is cabalamin, but let's just save that for later. Now, it's an essential nutrient. In general, we need to obtain it from an outside source. Although there's actually exciting news from microbiome studies that there are bacteria that are capable of producing vitamin B12 for us. But in general, we have to acquire it in our diet. Now, B12 is critical for red blood cell formation, it's critical for brain function, and it's critical for heart health. Now, unfortunately, there are many signs that are overlooked from a B12 deficiency. First of all, psychological problems, such as low mood or impaired memory, even problems with attention deficit disorder, even problems with bipolar can be traced to low B12 levels. I'm not saying there's a cause and effect, but many of my patients have low vitamin B12 with this. Now, more commonly is a feeling of fatigue. Now, fatigue covers lots of bases, but vitamin B12 is called the energy vitamin for a reason. And it really is essential for the production of ATP. So a deficiency in B12 can absolutely manifest as fatigue. If you get routine blood tests, hopefully your physician or provider is measuring an amino acid in your blood called homocysteine. Now, we won't have a, a physiology lecture or a biochemistry lecture, but vitamin B12 in its proper form lowers homocysteine levels in your blood. Now, why is that a good thing? Uh, homocysteine can damage your blood vessels. Homocysteine can damage your brain. And for many of us, it's a good marker for how fast or slow you're aging. And it's a good marker for how efficient your energy production is. So most healthcare providers don't measure vitamin B12 levels, but if you have an elevated homocysteine above nine, then you need to investigate your vitamin B12 levels. Finally, skin and hair issues. Multiple times we see people with pale skin, with dry skin, with flaky skin, with hair that's thin, that hair that's brittle. And yes, thyroid issues should be evaluated, but frequently B12 levels are missed in the work of this issue. So, Make sure on your annual physical to ask for a B12 level if your homocysteine level and make sure they're measuring a homocysteine level. Another way to spot this is hopefully your healthcare provider is getting a complete blood count on you once a year. And that complete blood count should include the size of your red blood cells and how much hemoglobin is in your red blood cells and the volume of your red blood cells. And one of the tip-offs of a folic acid or B12 deficiency is that you're not anemic, but your red blood cells are too big. And that's a classic finding of either a B12 or a folic acid deficiency. And it's sometimes the only way anybody ever spots it if they're looking for it. Okay, so where does B12 come from? Well, most of the time, a omnivore or a vegetarian gets their B12 from animal sources. It's very present in liver, it's present in fish, 
seafood present in shellfish. It's present in fortified foods. Many of the B vitamins in grains have been stripped off and the B vitamins are put back in in fortification. Many milk products are fortified with B vitamins. And there are supplements that contain B12. Now here's the problem. Half of us are born with a genetic mutation, one or two mutations, that are laughingly called the mother effer genes. Now, how did that name come about? The gene is called the MTHFR genes. And if you said that word out loud, you would be bleeped from network television. The mother effer gene makes enzymes that convert vitamin B12 and folic acid into their active forms by attaching a methyl group. And there won't be a test. A methyl group is a carbon and three hydrogen atoms, which make them into methylcobalamin and methylfolate. Now, again, half of us lack one of those genes. A number of people carry two copies. Now, if you look at people with these mutations and look at their family histories, there's an interesting either personal or family history of anxiety, depression, ADHD, bipolar, schizophrenia, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and suicide tendencies. Hence the name, the mother effort gene. Now, it's an easy fix. You don't even have to be tested for this gene because half of us carry that mutation. The easy fix is to take methyl B12 and methylfolate. But it gets a little more interesting than that. In order to absorb vitamin B12, you have to have a receptor in the lower part of your small intestine that's called intrinsic factor. And it basically allows B12 to be absorbed from your intestine. And a lot of people either are insufficient in intrinsic factor or simply lack it. So you could swallow all the vitamin B12, even the active form, and you still might not absorb it. Now, the great news is there's a workaround. If you take a methyl B12 and put it under your tongue, you will bypass the whole problem. And there are a number of methyl B12 supplements in sublingual form. Costco even sells one. Now, I'll tell you a hilarious story relating to this. I send my patients out to have them get methyl B12. And I had a patient with this mutation, and he had a low B12, and he had a high homocysteine. And I saw him back, and his homocysteine was still high, and his B12 was still quite low. And I said, you're not taking your B12. He says, oh, yeah, I use it every day. I said, no, you're not. He says, yes, I am. And I said, and you're putting it under your tongue, right? He looks at me, he says, no, it's so sweet, I use it to sweeten my coffee. I went, for crying out loud, you can't do that. Put it under your tongue. Next time I saw it, lo and behold, his homocysteine was normal, his B12 level was normal, all because he didn't sweeten his coffee with it, and he put it under his tongue. Now, there are a number of companies that make a chewable tablet of methyl B12 and methyl folate, and there's nothing wrong with those, except I've found that if you just chew it and swallow it, it doesn't work very well. But if you chew it and then take all the little bits and stuff it under your tongue, it'll work just fine. Now, what about B12 shots? Well, B12 shots came about long ago because certain people lacked intrinsic factor and they couldn't absorb B12. And half the people in the world didn't make the right kind of B12 because they didn't have the enzymes. 
So there was a useful need for B12 shots in those individuals. But now that we know the mechanism and now that we know the mutation, there is no need for a B12 shot. You can bypass that person by putting a methyl B12 and a methylfolate under your tongue. Problem solved. In fact, we joke in medicine now that the only person who benefits from a B12 shot is the person's wallet who is giving you that shot. Go to Costco, go elsewhere, get methyl B12, put it under your tongue. One last proviso. Some people who particularly carry the double mutation of the mother effort gene Note that they get more anxious or more agitated when they start taking methyl B12. And I've seen this in my patients. If that happens to you, there's a workaround. You can take vitamin B3, which is niacin or niacinamide, which is the milder form, and you just take like 250 milligrams of niacinamide for a week or so, and then slowly reintroduce the sublingual B12, and it blocks the effect. It's actually very effective. Now, it doesn't happen very often, but if you're one of those people who say, gee, B12 really agitates me, really, I don't feel good about it, try the niacinamide trick, and you'll be surprised how well it works. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast. Make sure to check out the next one here. So if you just bought that wonderful alkaline water at the health food store or even the grocery store and it's in plastic, you're not getting any hydrogen in your water.